right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the pre-stream podcast. Woo! I believe this is episode 95. I guess I should probably check on stuff like that every once in a while. Um, um, yeah, yesterday was episode 94. Today's episode 95, which means the next coming week will actually hit episode 100. It won't mean anything, but, you know, just saying. So welcome, everyone. How are you today? This lovely Sunday, the 20th of March, 2022. Today, incidentally, is my final streaming day of this week, or I should say my final consecutive streaming day of this week. Uh, today is technically the first day of the week, and there will be many streaming days coming up. In fact, when I get back uh, from my break tomorrow, I will be streaming for seven straight days. And the other exciting thing about that is that there's two new games coming out in the next week that I absolutely will be covering. I know I've skipped many new games in the last month in order to cover the insanely lengthy Elden Ring and Horizon Forbidden West games, which came out relatively around the same time. Uh, finally this week, I'll be wrapping up one of those games, and then I'll be heading into new stuff, which I know many of you have been waiting for. Literally, there have been people who are regulars, and they're like, you know, I don't really like Elden Ring, <clears throat> or... Not particularly that they, they dislike it, but it's just not their cup of tea. It's not the kind of thing they would watch long form. And it's been my mainstream for, what, two straight weeks? Without even mixing it up, because, I mean, I have to. If I don't keep doing this the rate that I'm playing it, I'll never beat the game. At this point, people are telling me I'm about halfway through. I'm about halfway through with 57 hours of gameplay. So, yeah. <clears throat> I think you see my point, okay? Um, so... Am I excited for the coming week? Absolutely, I am. I am. It's going to be a good one. And it'll be a full week of streaming every day, double streams, before I have to take a little bit of time off on the night streams to work on my taxes, which I talked about yesterday. Um, but we'll talk about that in a little bit when I get to the schedule, just to reiterate so people know what's going on. Um, <clears throat> I'm excited for today. You want to know why I'm excited for today? Because unlike basically the last two weeks of Elden Ring, Today, I am doing something new. I'm either going to be heading back to the Mist Woods, or Misty Woods, or whatever it's called, to see what happened when the meteor crashed against the planet after defeating Star Scourge Radon, or I'm going to be heading farther north to the new area that I had already unlocked. What is it, the Plateau or whatever? Um, <clears throat> but also, the fact that I have both medallions and I can use the lift to get up there too and see where that goes... I have all these different options today. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't. But that's the cool thing is that finally today, unlike, oh, day three of Liurnia, day four of Kaelid, it's like something fresh and new. And I have no idea what's coming up. And that's a good thing, I feel. Like, I want to be pleasantly surprised or maybe horrified by what's coming. Okay? So it should be pretty fun. And I hope that you guys will join me for today's stream. Um... Uh, no matter what, what what happens, I have no clue, you know. Um, <clears throat> a, a sense of wonderment, a sense that the adventure is continuing. And you know what? I hate to say this. I don't know if I ever really got that feeling about previous FromSoft games. You know what I'm saying? Like, previous FromSoft games pretty much have always been very linear. Even when there's multiple ways to go, it's like you're going this way or this way. That's it. In this game, it was like you could have done whatever you wanted. And here we are, three freaking weeks. Yes, we are three weeks into the release of Elden Ring, and the, it's like, it really does feel like kind of an adventure, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing today, but it's going to be something wild and wacky and interesting, I'm sure, and uh, I'll be surprised, and that's a good thing, which kind of leads me into something else that I need to say. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I realize that many of you have played Elden Ring and maybe gotten past me. I realize that some of you have beaten it. I realize that many of you have watched other content creators rush through this game and beat it relatively fast so they could do multiple playthroughs because this is kind of their bread and butter game. It has it been good for me? Yes, it has. But I'm still a variety streamer, and I haven't just nonstop streamed Elden Ring like a lot of other people have. So here I am, about halfway through the game, three weeks in. Okay? Um, what I would ask is this. Please refrain from spoilers. It is starting to get really bad at this point seriously 
First it was Radon, Radon, Radon. Can't wait for Phil to fight Radon. Radon is the skill check. Radon's going to kill Phil. Radon, this, Radon, that. Radon up, Radon down, Radon all around. Radon, Radon, Radon. Right? So then I get to Radon. I steamroll the motherfucker because they nerfed him. I'm incredibly disappointed because people built him up and spoiled him for so long. And then it's like, okay, well, what about, well, I can't wait till it gets to this. this. No, stop it. And I mean it. You can't spoil the game in my chat. Some people have been pretty bad at doing this. Um, you can't keep doing that. I want to be pleasantly surprised by what's going on. Right now, uh, oh, there's this duo coming up. The duo. I can't wait till he fights the duo, the duo, the duo. Shut up. Just shut up. I don't even want to see that once mentioned in my chat. Because it's fucking spoiling the game. You know, I don't want to be like, oh, well, now I kind of know what this is because people talked about it for fucking 14 hours before I got to it. No, stop it, you know. There's definitely a difference between, okay, Phil's in an area, he's exploring, and he keeps missing this secret. Or Phil already cleared an area, he's done with it, he's moved on, but he missed an optional boss fight or an optional thing that only happens during a certain time of day. Let me give him a hint about that. That's different than literally for 20 hours before I encounter something tough, telling me about how tough it is, and you, you know, very different, okay? So, please, stop with that baloney, all right? I, it, it is disappointing when, you know, with Radon, here's the thing. If people had never hyped up Radon, if people had not talked about him nonstop for a week and a half, it made me feel like this was going to be one of the big pivotal epic points of the game. Maybe I wouldn't have been as upset or disappointed when I finally got to him and found out how easy he was now that they've patched him. But the fact that you guys build up the anticipation kind of unfairly, spoiling the game, which you shouldn't have done, basically it, it steamrolled that situation. You know what I mean? It just compounded it and made it worse and worse and worse. All right. <clears throat> so, please, none of that crap. Especially today. Today I'm, I'm legit heading into new stuff. And I have no clue what's going to happen. And I want to have that feeling of kind of like wonderment and awe and expectation of something new and interesting and different rather than just, oh, well, you know, was it good or not? Or, you know, don't tell me. Don't tell me about this shit, okay? Okay. Fair enough? I hope so. All right. So, let's talk a little bit about the streams coming up this week. All right? And here's some good news for those of you who felt that my last two pre-stream podcasts were absolutely long-winded and maybe way too serious. Today, we're going to talk about the history of human trafficking here on the pre-stream podcast, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to cover it. We're going to get in-depth into this very, very bad, important issue, and we're going to get to the bottom of how to solve it on the... No. No, as I told you guys, every once in a while, I'll, t I'll cover something that I feel is important or pertinent to things we're doing. There's nothing in particular going on today. I check the news, there's like nothing happening. And I'm like, all right, we're not doing that. We're not doing anything too crazy today. Likely what we'll do, we'll go through the schedule. Uh, I'll do shout outs for contributions. I'll, we'll do a little bit of Q&A and that'll be the podcast for today. A lot more simple formula, okay? All right. If you don't know, last two days were very serious topics. First, we talked about the Hogwarts legacy controversy, uh, how people are going to boycott the game despite the fact their problems with the game actually has nothing to do with the game. It's very logical. Um, and then yesterday, we talked about the nerfing of Radon and how it's a slippery slope and how Elden Ring is screwing up right now doing what they're doing. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the schedule. Today, it is Elden Ring on the main gameplay stream yet again. Um, and we'll see what happens. I'm excited for new exploration. Like I said, the adventure continues. I actually feel like today might be one of the better streams because I don't know what's coming. Then tonight on the late stream at 6.45 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, it is Horizon Forbidden West. Two hours of major story development. In fact, last time around, we had finished up two major uh, story arcs. And we were heading into another one, and then I ran out of time. It was like a cliffhanger place to kind of end the session. And I'm happy that we finally get to pick that up tonight, okay? From what I'm to understand, we are very close to the end of Horizon Forbidden West. So, my focus this week is to beat it before the new releases come out on Friday. Alright? So, Horizon tonight, I hope you guys will join me. It'll be a much more chill stream. Elden Ring will be tense, action, have to pay attention every moment or I'm going to die. 
while Horizon is way more relaxed and chill and has a lot more interaction and stuff in that regard, okay? Tomorrow, I am going to be covering the human trafficking story. No. Tomorrow, I am off from streaming, okay? No streaming. This will give you guys a nice opportunity to get caught up with everything that I've done over the last week here on DSP Gaming. You can watch it all on demand. If you do choose to watch it on demand, I would ask if you like the stuff I've done, please give those videos likes and leave comments. The engagement has been very important ever since last month when the new releases started to hit, okay? You guys have been great. You've been liking the streams. You've been liking the videos. You've been leaving comments. And when you're doing that, you're helping the channel. There has been a distinct spike in engagement on the videos. And other things like subscriptions and things are way up. So we can keep that momentum going if you guys just keep doing what you've been doing all along. All right? So thank you for that. Now, when I return on Tuesday, it'll be Elden Ring paired with Horizon Forbidden West. Wednesday will be Elden Ring paired with a nice Skyrim chill stream. We've actually been doing the main plot recently in Skyrim, which has been very fun. I've mostly forgotten a lot of the main plot points because it's been 10 years. And honestly, you get so immersed in all the side content of Skyrim, you forget what the main plot even is. So, I hope that you guys will join me. And then, on Thursday, the last crazy non-stop marathon day of Elden Ring. Yeah, Thursday will be the last day where Elden Ring will be the mainstream non-stop. Thursday night will be the likely conclusion of Horizon Forbidden West. Okay? Hopefully. I hope that within tonight, uh, Tuesday, and Thursday, we can finish the game. Six more hours of story. Um, which will be a good thing. Okay? Then, on Friday, finally, the time has come. After staying away for an entire month, I'll be covering new releases. It'll be Ghostwire Tokyo paired with Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Full day of new release content. Okay? Now, normally... Friday nights would be Friday Night Fights, which means my old school throwback Street Fighter session. However, since it is a double new release day this Friday, I'm bumping Friday Night Fights, and now Friday Night Fights is going to take place on Saturday night. So likely what you'll see is Ghostwire Tokyo and Kirby, Ghostwire Tokyo and Street Fighter, and then probably Sunday we'll go back to Elden Ring and pair that with Kirby. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Um, now, I'm also supposed to be streaming on Monday of next week, or if nothing changes. So, if that's the case, then we can maybe swing back to Ghostwire Tokyo and either do some Skyrim or do more Kirby, depending on how much people are liking Kirby. All right? Um, so, that's the deal. It's going to be seven straight days of streaming for me. All right? Starting tomorrow. Which will, excuse me. Starting Tuesday, which will be very exciting. Um... I don't know why someone just tipped and no pop-up came up. At least the tip came through. So I will shout you out. I, Leviath, uh, a Levia Titan. Um, but I'm sorry, I don't know why a pop-up didn't show up on the screen. Because they were working as of yesterday. And in fact, what we could do is test it. Because I have it open. Now I'm, on, now I'm ready to go. I got all my shit on my laptop ready to go. So when something like this happens, I just press this like this. It works. So thank you, I lo lo love a titan. I will shout you out later when we get to the shout-outs. I don't know why the animation didn't play. I have no idea. Because it obviously worked. Some kind of a stupid glitch. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. Um, so. Good streaming week coming up for sure. Okay? Now. Basically, there's a seven straight days of double streaming. I'll have that Tuesday off. When I come back, all right, starting that Wednesday, which I believe would be the 20... I want to say it's the 29th of March. It's either the 29th or the 30th of March. Basically, what I'm going to be doing for a couple of nights, I'm not going to be doing night streams. I'm only going to be doing one major gameplay stream a day. Why? Because I need to work on my taxes. I'm behind this year. A lot of years, I actually have this stuff ready and up front and ready to go. This year, it's a lot tougher for me because of personal reasons and, and things that happened with me with identity theft last year that kind of screwed up a lot of my records. So because of that, it's going to be a lot harder to work on. And I need to sit down and just have hours on end to dedicate to it. The only way I'm going to do that is by not streaming a couple of days. All right? So I'll be streaming, but only one major stream for a couple of days, and there will be no night streams. All right? But also, 
that first week of April is my birthday week. And there's two special things that will be happening during my birthday week. The first thing is I'll be having birthday festivities behind me. Meaning there'll be decorations and fun stuff. If I get any big contributions that week, I'll probably do something special. Like usually I have like a party horn or something that I blow to say thanks. And I would like to do something special because it is my 40th birthday. It is official. When you turn 40 years old, you're over the hill. Meaning you're already past your prime. You're more than your first half of your life is over. It's all downhill from here. That's what they say. So in order to celebrate the remaining terrible days of my life, I'd like to do something special. Now, what will it be? I'm not sure yet. I don't know if I'll do a marathon or a special event. I'm thinking about it. And quite frankly, I don't know yet what to do because I got to think about schedule-wise what's going on with my wife and everything too, which we don't know yet. So once I find all that out, uh, I will let you know, but I'm going to do something special either on or around my birthday, uh, which is April 6th, okay? We'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll call it the midlife crisis stream, even though I'm honestly not having a midlife crisis. I'm having more fun now than I ever had in my entire life, which is pretty interesting that I'm in the opposite situation of many people. Uh, I actually feel like my life up to now was kind of not as good, and now my life is great. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm happy about that, obviously. So, all right. Anyway, we shall see what happens. All right? I'll let you know as we get closer. Um, so anyway, all I want to say is, guys, thank you so much. The engagement this month has been outstanding. Um, the support this month has been great. I have zero complaints in any really regard. Uh, I'm shocked that the Elden Ring streams are still doing as well as they're doing because I've been playing this game now for three straight weeks. And typically, when I play any game for a lengthy amount of time, there's burnout. Now, don't get me wrong. If you look at the attendance on the Elden Ring streams daily now, compared to when I started, we're at like half, no lie. Like when I started, I think that first stream had like anywhere from 800 to 1,000 viewers. Um, and then within those first two weeks of playing it, it was anywhere from like, I don't know, I would say between like 400 to like 700 viewers a day. Some days we still had five, six, 700 viewers coming to the stream. But the further you get into a lengthy game like this, you're always going to have the viewership tapering off. Because you're going to have people who don't want to be spoiled and people who are basically getting caught up on, on demand because they're not watching as much. They're not here for every live stream, etc. All right? So, thank you for the fact that even though I'm almost 60 hours into the game, we're heading into the second half of the game essentially today. Um, thank you for still attending, still supporting, because... I did worry that at length, if I just played the same game all month, what would happen? And you guys have absolutely been engaging and supporting the streams regardless, okay? So that being said, it's been good. I got no complaints. But, but, I'm very happy there's new content this week with two new releases. Because, as you know, I've told you guys this, I'm a variety streamer. And I feel the reason that I have the longevity that I have and the fact that I still love what I do to, to this day is because I do variety of stuff. If I were a person who only played one genre, like just fighting games, I would be completely and utterly burnt out. Absolutely, I would. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> I very much enjoy the fact that every day when I sit down to stream, it's a different style of game and it's something very different. I mean, within two days, I could be playing an open-world RPG a driving game, a fighting game, and a shooter. You couldn't be any more different, right? Like, every game is so completely different, but I'm able to jump into them and have fun with them and make progress in them. It's not like Phil sucks at every game he plays and he never beats any of them. It's kind of the opposite. I'm the guy who can consistently stream and beat everything he plays as long as he dedicates the time and effort to it, right? And that's a good thing. I'm not saying I'm good at any of those games. I'm just saying, hey, at least I can put out a variety of solid content. And I know for a fact that there are people that attend a certain kind of stream. For example, some of you who are here for the podcast may not be here for Elden Ring, but a new audience will come in for Elden Ring. And that audience may not stick around. Maybe a new audience coming in for Horizon Forbidden West later tonight. You see what I'm saying? Which will be a different audience for people who watch me when I play Ghostwire Tokyo later this week. And that's a good thing. <clears throat> okay? That's a very good thing. Um, I'm happy that I have a worldwide audience. People from all walks of life, from all over this planet, come to join me for honest, 
reactions, interpretations, and or just gameplay in general of, of, of the hot new releases, as well as classics and everything in between. Um, it's very unique. It is. It's very unique. And the good thing is I don't really have a downtime. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when there are no new releases coming out, we still have games to play. It's not a big deal, as opposed to someone who's only covering one genre. It's like, well, like, I'll give you a perfect example. This year, EVO. The National Fighting Game Championships. You look at their lineup and you're like, oh, it's like old game, old game, old game. Game that just came out that's not very good. Old game, old game, old game. Blah. Boring. Right? <laughs> it is, but boring. Not here. Here it's like, okay, Elden Ring, the hottest game out right now. Plus some chill classic stuff with Skyrim. Finishing up the other game that came out last month. Two hot new games coming out Friday. It's a cool, good feeling. Keeping that momentum going and keeping the variety going. All right? <laughs> And I'm very happy about that. Um, and I, I, I will say this. Yes, the last three weeks have been very weird. It's very rare when I would play a game like this this much. Like, this is essentially one of the longest video games I've ever played. And I know that we're not even, you know, we're just heading into the second half. So it's not even we're, like, at the home stretch yet. And I know this is going to be a game that will continue on a while because now I'm going to be balancing <clears throat> uh, other games. But... I'll be doing my, my absolute best, you know, to keep everything going, the momentum that's been going. And thank you to those who maybe in particular don't like Elden Ring or it's not your cup of tea and you've been patient and you've been watching the other content. And perhaps you will come back when Elden Ring is done or when the new content starts this coming Friday, all right? Ghostwire Tokyo looks very interesting to me. Um, first of all, from the mind of the man who made... You know, the, the Resident Evil games such as Resident Evil 4 and the Evil Within series. Some reports are saying that actually Ghostwire Tokyo started out as the idea for Evil Within 5, but got canned when basically they decided to go a different direction and start a new IP because Evil Within 2 didn't do so good. So, yeah, it seems like a completely unique style game. I can't wait to play it starting this Friday. All right. No, I'm not interested in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Why would I be? It's a freaking spin-off of Borderlands. Borderlands 3 was boring. It was all right, but it was it was like, damn, it's the same thing again. Like, I don't really want to play it again. So, I have zero interest in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, So what? <laughs> uh, let's. That's really all I've got. I got nothing else to really talk about today. Like I said, today's a way more chill, relaxed pre-stream podcast without anything special to talk about. So what I will do, let's get to shout-outs. Let's start giving shout-outs for the contributions and answering questions and go from there, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's do some shout-outs. We start off with Barely Legal who has re-upped his, sub uh, his subscription, excuse me, re-upped his membership for five months in a row and says, F yeah, Phil, thank you very much, Barely Legal, for the ongoing support. Very nice. Um, Anso Kamaru is today's first tipper. <clears throat> he did the dollar fifty. By the way, I'm sorry, my post-nasal drip is very bad today. I woke up and already it was bothering me. I'm like, dude, it sucks when you wake up and you already have shit going on. I'm like, Jesus. It's been like this is the moment I woke up today. Nothing I could do about it. Um, all right, so Anso Kamaru, tip me a dollar fifties. I know you won't can't get to it due to time constraints, but Ghostwire Tokyo has a really cool free prelude game. It details the story and characters before the events of the game. It's a pretty cool way to get involved in the storyline before release. Honestly, I don't probably wouldn't want to play it anyway. That's spoilers, right? Feels sounds like spoilers to me. I don't want to be spoiled on the game. I want to play it honestly. I've seen very little footage. The footage that I've seen blew my mind. How crazy it looked. Um, so I kind of don't want to know much about the game, I feel like that'll actually expose me to stuff in the game that maybe would be like a nice surprise when I'm playing it. So actually, I'm happy I'm not playing this pre prelude thing, but I heard about it. I heard that, yeah, there's a free prelude thing you can download and play ahead of time to kind of get you into the lore of the game or whatever. So. <clears throat> okay. Continuing on. I, Levia Titan, did that $5 tip earlier, and so we you ever return to Sekiro Philly Willy? Well, first of all, I don't know who Philly Willie is. I'm going to have to ask around and see if I can figure that out. But, <clears throat> Sekiro really does feel like a unique entity among the FromSoft games. And here's why. Okay? 
unlike other FromSoft games, where multiple runs essentially mean different styles of playing. For example, when you're playing a Dark Souls game, you could do a melee run, you could do a hybrid run where it's melee and magic, like a paladin, you could do a full intelligence run where you're using sorceries and the like, and every run you do in those games feels different. It really does. They do a good job of having the builds make the game feel completely different. In Bloodborne, depending on which trick weapons you use during the course of the game, it could dramatically change the gameplay of the game. Some weapons are more fast and, and it, you know, lead to like combos and bleed damage. Some are giant lumbering weapons that slam and do giant counter hit damage or giant kind of stun damage. Uh, even the guns. Some of the guns are meant to parry and counter what an enemy is doing so you could go, go for a visceral attack after by interrupting them. Some are meant for actual damage output. Some are meant for just like do 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 rapid fire interruption. So depending on the loadout you use in Bloodborne, that could also change your gameplay experience. Okay? Now look at Sekiro. No matter when you're playing it, what run you're doing, you're the same guy, same build, the same sword. The only difference in Sekiro is the side weapons that you choose to use, like the firecrackers or the hand axe, etc. Do those change the gameplay of the game? To some extent, yes, although a lot of those weapons don't really have use except for certain set situations. For example, the firecrackers are really good against beast enemies and not really good against anything else. <clears throat> so there's really no reason to use them consistently. You see what I'm saying? If you play Sekiro once and you basically do all the secret and side content in the game, you've essentially seen most of the game. The only difference is if you do one critical plot choice different, it changes the end of the game. And there's like one other boss. And after that, it's literally the same gameplay every run through. So the difference here is with Dark Souls, with Bloodborne, every time you play, you could change up the style of gameplay and it makes it feel refreshing and interesting. In Sekiro, the only thing you could essentially do is try to do a little bit better than your first run or maybe try to do challenge runs where you purposely nerf yourself. <clears throat> but outside of that, it's the same fucking experience over and over. So that being said... <clears throat> man, my, my post nasal was really bothering me today. <clears throat> Damn it, it's annoying. Let me have a sip. So that being said, after I beat Sekiro... I had actually done so well at the end of the game. I steamrolled the final boss. Three tries was it was either four or three tries. I beat him. It was like 15 minutes, not even. And I was on, on Cloud9. I was like, dude, I really learned this game. The parry system as well as how to use those trick weapons. If you remember, I was had the fully upgraded hand axe and I kicked the last boss with it, kicked his ass with it. So I was like, dude, let's do it. Let's do a new game plus run. Let's go right into it. Uh, and I did. And I played for about an hour and a half to two hours. I did a new game plus run. And within the one and a half to two hours that I played, I beat like six hours of gameplay from my first run. <clears throat> That's how much better I had gotten at the game. And with the second run, it was just like steamroll the shit out of it. Okay? And here's what happened when that happened. Everyone said to me, don't ever play it again. Seriously. I, w I had it on the schedule to do a new game plus run because I was interested. Everyone said, don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not going to be entertaining. Here's why. A lot of people, <clears throat> when they watch me play these games, from soft games, or just in general hyper-difficult games, the enjoyment comes from the original experience of seeing me come up against a very, very one-sided adventure. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is very, very bad odds. Everything's stacked against me, right? It's going to take me a while to learn what to do. There's going to be fails. There's going to be rage. That's all part of the process of playing one of these style of games. Okay? And that process of seeing me fail repeatedly, get angry and rage, overcome that rage, learn the fight, win, persevere, that's a lot of <clears throat> uh, the advantage of, 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 not the advantage, but the appeal of me playing these kind of games. You see what I'm saying? Like, people tell me outright, that's why I watch. I love that feeling of seeing you rage and fail, but then persevere. So, if I'm going through a FromSoft game for a second time and I'm doing a different build or something, it adds variety. It makes it interesting and fun, right? <clears throat> but if I'm playing Sekiro a second time 
and literally it's going to be the same shit a second time, only this time I'm better at the game and I'm steamrolling it, it kind of takes the appeal away from the reason that people watch me play from software to begin with. You see what I'm saying? Um, and I understand that, but it was kind of funny that for the, you know, for the first time in a long time within one run of a FromSoft game, I actually got pretty good at, to, by, pretty good at it by the end. And, you know, I beat the boss so quickly, it shocks everyone. No one expected me to beat the final boss that, that fast, including me. And now it's like, let's see me actually, you know, now that I know what I'm doing, go through the game. No, 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 no. We don't want to see you. And here's the thing. There are plenty of people out there who do this. Their first run is considered the exploratory run, all right? Last night, Kat and I were watching a particular streamer play Elden Ring. This particular streamer got to a boss fight that I got to at almost the same level, okay? And this streamer died, 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 and didn't give up, kept playing that boss again and again and again for 90 minutes. Okay, after 90 minutes, they beat the boss. Now they were live streaming, and you can actually not not see the text, but you could. He's reading the messages of his audience, and his audience is essentially like, "Why are you putting your head against the wall in this boss fight? Why don't you leave and come back later?" To which he said two things. Number one, a lot of the enjoyment of the game for him is knowing that you're going against such odds that are stacked against you. And that you succeed in that endeavor after learning things in time. And number two, this is just my first run. My first run is meant to be like this. Expect more of this because this is how I learned the game. Now, in subsequent runs, since I'm taking the time to do this right now, to learn the boss pattern and die, die, die a million times, when I come back later, I will remember this boss and I will take them on in a different manner because I'm learning now. So it's all worth it in the long run, okay? Fair enough. This is a pro-level soul streamer. This is not some schlub. This was someone who is well-known for playing Dark Souls at a professional level. But this is his first run in the game. So essentially, he says, I can die as much as I want. I can take as long as I want against any boss. That's what you're meant to do in your first run of the game. Oh! So you mean like exactly how I play Dark Souls, but everyone gives me shit and says that I suck and you need a death counter to show how many times you die to a particular boss and you su you need to get good and blah, blah, blah. This guy is the pro a pro level guy. His, his main occupation is to play, dissect, and, and, and tear apart from soft and ultra difficult games. He literally plays it the same way that I fucking do, and absolutely no one gives him shit for it. So isn't it fucking funny that I basically play the, the game the same way that the pros do? And by the way, by no means am I saying that I'm better than this guy. Fuck no. This guy is taking on stuff way earlier than I ever did, and he's beating it. And I'm like, wow, he's good. Look at that. He's parrying. He's doing the new counter hit system. He's implementing all these gameplay mechanics. He's memorizing boss patterns and counting strikes and dodging through the strikes. And I'm like, this guy is fucking good. All right? But at the same time, when I watch these pro players, by the way, there's two or three of them that I've seen now, and they all seem to have this same mentality, that when you play a FromSoft game the first time around, it's meant to be that situation where you're going to fail a ton, yes, you could keep trying at something that's tougher because you're going to learn and you're going to have a feeling of enjoyment and accomplishment if you eventually succeed. You know, everything that I've been doing in Elden Ring and people are being dick fucks to me and insulting me and saying that I suck and this is a waste of time and it's boring. It's okay for the pro player. It's not okay for me though, all right? So what I'm here to tell you is it's an unfair standard. Seriously, it's an unfair standard that I somehow get held to 
that I can't do things the way everyone else does. I've got to have the death counter. Oh, I'm a schlub because I died to the same boss a million times when everyone else seems to do it. You know, fuck that. And I really am tired of that uh, situation. I really am tired of that situation where if I'm going to see people react to me in that manner, I'm just going to say, fuck you, get out. Really? I'm just, I'm tired of that shit. If I'm genuinely enjoying a game and playing it for, or, you know, for the way I want to play it the first run through, then you should appreciate that. And you should give me the same level of respect and dignity and understanding and appreciation that everyone else gets when they play these fucking games. It shouldn't be, oh, let's just sit here and give Phil a miserable time because he died a bunch to a boss and tell him he's doing it wrong. He's playing. Fuck you. That's not even the, the top level people who make a living playing these fucking games don't say the shit you're saying. You're just a bunch of scumbags coming to my content to try to fucking make me feel like shit. And I'm not putting up with it anymore. My eyes have really been open. All right. So anyway, the reason I'm bringing this up is because my first runs through FromSoft games are the runs where you're going to see me challenge the most, right? And I think that's why people actually like to see me play these games so much. I'm three weeks into Elden Ring, and we're still going to have great attendance today because people want to see me take on stuff for the first time and see me get challenged or whatever. That's part of the, the, the great attraction of this style of game. And I totally understand that. But when you start doing your second run, your third run, and now you're, you know everything that's coming in the game, and all you're trying to do is find a better way to beat it, maybe with an alternate loadout or alternate play style, I would argue that there will, people, there will be people who will absolutely succeed at that, okay? Likely these pro-level guys who, like, they beat the game once, and now they're like, I'm going back, and I'm only going to use certain kinds of weapons maybe only the starter weapons or i'm gonna do a whole level the level one run thing seems to be a very popular thing i'm gonna go back and never level my guy up i'll level up the weapons and i'll use weapon effects and everything but it's a level one run i don't know why this is a thing this to me is like the equivalent of any rpg refusing to ever ever level up a stat how the fuck are you gonna beat the whole game when you have the level one fire spell right but they do it and you know what more power to them. They, they deserve a lot of respect for figuring out, figuring out ways to do that shit. Because I don't have the patience for that. I don't. I would not be going through Elden Ring a second time and say level 1 run. Like, what, are you out of your fucking mind? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, but anyway. The point I'm making here is. With a game like Sekiro. I don't think there's attraction to seeing me play it again. Because I've already been there, done that. And what else am I going to do? Just relearn the parry system and everything. Get good at it again. And then beat the game again. Like, there's nothing new. As opposed to... If I play Elden Ring again, if I play a Dark Souls game again, I can at least add variables to the mix that make it seem more interesting, like changing my build, etc. You see? So, that's that's what I'm thinking, alright? That's why I've never been back to Sekiro and why I don't think people have been asking me to go back to Sekiro. And I know that's a very in-depth answer because I wanted to tie in a few other things with it there. Okay? So, I hope that that makes sense. If anyone ever did ask for me to go back to Sekiro, I would consider it. If people actually legit said, hey, Phil, would you ever go back to Dark Souls Remastered and do a different build run or whatever? Maybe, if you guys wanted it. I don't really get those kind of requests, you know? Okay, let's continue on. Of course, we go from that very serious question to Mr. Poopy Butthole, who tipped me a dollar fifty. He says, you should play the new GTA 5 Remastered on PS5. This is the 84th Remaster before GTA 6. I can't wait. Well, as I've stated, I'm not against playing GTA 5 again. I've only played it once. If you remember, I played it as a new release on Xbox 360, was it? And then <clears throat> I got it again on PS4, but you guys demanded I get it. And then when I got it, no one wanted to watch it. It was a very weird situation. I say you guys, but this was so many years ago. Likely most of the people around then are not around now anymore. Um, but it was a very weird thing where there was such hype around GTA 5. That I beat it, and within a few months of beating it, they came out on the next-gen consoles. And people were like, well, now play it on PS4, because you can play it in first person. And it'll be a different experience. And I wasn't even convinced, but then people convinced me to buy it. I was like, alright. So I bought it, I played it for like 10 hours, and people were so bored with seeing it again so soon, that I just dropped the whole idea, and I never went back to it. Okay? So I never really played it after the first run, more than just a few hours. Now, with GTA 6 in development... 
and I'm sure we're going to be getting information about GTA 6 possibly in the next couple of years. When we get concrete information and we kind of have an idea for a time frame of its release, then I would consider going back and redoing a full playthrough of GTA 5, at which time, likely I'll just play whatever is the latest version. You know, right now we have the PS5, Xbox Series X version, so I'll, uh, whatever the latest version may be and whatever the cheapest version may be at that time... That's probably the one that I'll play. <laughs> okay. All right. Goji Tank says, tip me $1.50. <clears throat> and says, so it's Friday night fights and now Saturday night fights. Or just that one day because of the two new releases. For now, it's just for that one day. It's very rare when there would actually be two new releases coming out on exactly the same day. And it just so happens that I'm interested in playing both of those new releases on that same day. And that day happens to be a Friday. That's like the stars are aligning, you know. It's it's extenuating circumstance. Uh, and that just happens to be this Friday. No. Friday Night Fights will remain on Friday nights for the foreseeable future. Except for this week when there's a reason not to. Okay. Guitar Player 1939 has tipped me $10. Thank you very much, Guitar Player. It's good to see you here today. And that is the biggest... Tip of the day so far. There we go. <clears throat> I, Levia Titan, now took me $3 and said thank you very much for the nice and in-depth and wonderful answer, Willie the Philly. I guess that's my new name is Willie the Philly. There you go. I used to be Philly Blunt. Or filled with the oddly shaped head. And now I am Willie the Philly. I like these nicknames. Very nice. <clears throat> Dan the Man is here today. And he just tipped me $6.66. Says, hey, Phil. What's going on, Dan? It's good to see you. Thank you for making my ass light up on fire. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, Hold on. <coughs> <coughs> On a day when I put bad post-nasal drip, <clears throat> sadly, it can make my throat tickle. And it's like, geez, man, I really hate to put a post-nasal drip when I get it. And today's just a bad day. It sucks. <clears throat> Yuck. <clears throat> Yuck. Okay. Um, so Zoya did a super chat and saying, why do so many people want to see you suffer? All right. Now, here's the thing, Zoya. I actually think that this mentality that everyone wants to see Phil suffer is actually not exactly what you're thinking, but there is two distinct groups of people, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Because I actually feel that there's three groups of people who watch my content, okay? First of all, there's a group of people who enjoy just watching me play anything, and enjoy just chilling with me. These are the people that will come by for the chill streams like Skyrim. All right? They don't care that there's no high level of challenge. It's not about progression in a game. It's not about getting good or overcoming anything. It's literally just have some chill time with Phil. Have some fun conversation. Enjoy the gameplay as it happens. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? Um, it's different. It's a different kind of content creation. There's a lot of content creators out here who literally that's all that they have as a fan base. People who like their their personality and their attitude and their, their, their mentality so much, they don't even care what they're doing. They'll watch them play a game. They'll watch them cook a meal. They'll watch them take a shit. Doesn't matter. They just like the person so much, it's considered chill streaming, okay? And there's a lot of content creators who actually succeed like that. And I do believe that I do have... <clears throat> this is really pissing me off today. Anyway... I do really believe that I have a group of people who enjoy that content. If not, we would never have a late night chill stream that made sense. I'd have two people on them, right? Right. Now, there's another group of people <clears throat> that are not of that mentality. There's a group of people, and this, I would argue that this group of people might have actually been some of my longer time viewers. Because they remember back to a time when I used to play every major game, and I used to rush through every major game. And for me, <clears throat> it was all about beating the games as quickly as humanly possible and 
getting that content out on the internet. It was definitely a different era. It was not the live streaming era. It was get that playthrough out and get those day one views, yada, yada, yada. All right. <clears throat> and so back then, okay, to see me play an ultra difficult game was a rare treat. Because if I played an ultra difficult game, well, here's someone who's trying to beat that game as fast as he can. And he's getting his ass beat. And it's funny as shit to see me rage and get pissed that there's a difficulty spike in a game. Or to hit a wall in a game and I can't get past it. And to die to a boss again and again and again and again and again. And I feel like that's why... <clears throat> when I originally played the original Dark Souls 1 and I had no idea what I was getting into. That's why that is still... One of the most infamous and most well-known playthroughs I've done because of my reactions, because of the fact that the game defeated me and I gave up on it, right? And I agree with you. That's entertainment. And I'm happy to have done that. I really am. Because you can now look at how I've changed over the years as both a gamer and a content creator and see that I have taken the time to study and persevere at that style of game. But there's still this element <clears throat> that... If Phil's going to be challenged by something ultra hard and he's going to fail and die, it's very entertaining. I'll be honest with you guys. A lot of the time so far in this Elden Ring playthrough, I come down to the very last hit of a boss. And sometimes I get the hit and sometimes I don't. Those are the moments, right? Those are the epic moments that people come to see. Me too. Like, I feel when I'm in the middle of this epic situation... Okay, this epic situation of playing a game like this and having a situation where it's like, man, at any moment if I make a wrong move, I'm done. I got to start over, right? It's, it's cool. It's a unique feeling. And I love that suspenseful feeling. I get goosebumps sometimes during an epic boss fight in one of these games. And I got to try to be like, oh, no, stay calm. Don't get nervous. Don't let it bother you. You're, you're going to beat this guy. Just, you know, stay calm, play your game. You know what I mean? It's kind of the same mentality I used to have when I used to play competitive Street Fighter. <clears throat> you may know you're going up against something epically challenging. A well-known pro player. No. Play your game. Learn the match. Play it well. You can do this. doesn't matter who you're facing. It's for, irregardless, you, you know, you, as long as you believe in yourself, you can persevere through this, right? It's like, it's crazy that people play these games at a high level with such an audience, right? <clears throat> so there's a group of people that's what they live for man that's why they watch dark side phil those moments of him either failing 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 and raging or finally epically persevering overcoming okay and i'm okay i'm totally okay with that that absolutely i make that makes sense to me and would you say those people want to see me suffer well yeah it's not necessarily fun to watch someone literally steamroll absolutely everything in a video game. I told you guys how disappointed I am that Radon was nerfed. I wanted to have challenge. And that challenge was taken away from me by FromSoft when they patched the game. Okay? And that really upsets me. That absolutely upsets me. Alright? But, there is a third group of people. They... I like to call the hate watchers, all right? These aren't people that like me and want to chill with me. These aren't people that enjoy my personality when I come up against something challenging and like to see me fail, fail, fail because of my reactions and then eventually persevere. These people are genuinely bad-intentioned, toxic, negative people who for one insane reason or another, and yes, I will absolutely categorize it as insane because the reason that these people hate me makes no fucking sense these are people who never met me these are people who don't know any truth about me what they've heard is slander defamation conspiracy and contrived bullshit but people have found ways to take slander, defamation, conspiracy, and contrived bullshit and turn it into popularity on the internet. And so, when people are literally daily live streaming my content illegally, talking shit, making shit up, always doing toxic memes, insulting, 
bringing up new conspiracy after new conspiracy. Like the newest one is Phil's been using a guide all along. Phil has not done a legitimate thing in Elden Ring. He literally researches every possible thing beforehand so that he can persevere in the game. Because if he didn't, he would never be anything in the game, right? <clears throat> you know, one of the, <clears throat> the infamously, uh, famously and infamously times that I did really well in the game was the end of Sekiro. I legit had never seen the final boss of Sekiro before, before I fought him. Not once. I didn't watch a video or playthrough. I never looked ahead in the game. I was fighting that for the first time legit, and within three, four tries, beat him. All right? While other people were taking hours and hours, it took me three, four tries. I was like, I got him. I know what to do. Take this. Okay? <laughs> to this day, people will not admit that I did well in the game. They want, he cheated. He looked that up. He definitely looked that up because we, somewhere down in our twisted, toxic hearts, right? We can't believe that this guy could possibly do good at anything. He's a sl he's the ultimate bum, right? He's terrible at everything he does. He schlubs his way through life. He's a, he, you know, he's, he doesn't deserve any popularity. He's never been good at anything. They, they, they write off my Street Fighter years, right? They say that I never did anything good in Street Fighter. That even though there's years of history, tournament results all over the internet, right? He was never good at Street Fighter. Even though it's well documented that I was a prominent tournament director on the East Coast of the United States for a good two, three years in the New York and other tri-state area, Phil never contributed anything positive to the Street Fighter community. He was always just a toxic jerk. They literally just erase history to pass their own twisted toxic narrative. And they believe it. Because these are the same people that believe insane conspiracy theories about everything else. <clears throat> they likely think that vaccines are dangerous to you. They probably think that there's a fucking conspiracy against them in the government. You know what I'm saying? Like, they believe in crazy shit. But that kind of people, they flock together on the internet and they form entire communities. And there's people who, I hate to say it, prey on those people. All right? Do I actually believe <clears throat> that the people who watch the restreamers of my content, excuse me, let me rephrase that. Do I actually believe that the restreamers of my content believe 90% of the shit that they say about me? No. What I think has happened is they realize now that they can take advantage of a bunch of gullible, stupid people. And they realize that they need to constantly be stirring them up to get that fervor going to keep that gravy train rolling for them. So if it means making something up completely or taking something and twisting it in a way that it's not what it was intended or literally just pulling conspiracy out of thin air out of their ass, they will do it on a daily basis <clears throat> in order to profit. Essentially, they're cult leaders. They have this weird cultish toxic following to hate Phil, hate Phil, hate Phil. And you might say, where did it come from? Originally, it came from things like this is how you don't play, making it virally popular to crap on Dark Side Phil. But when people saw that innocent, maybe not necessarily harmful videos like that were becoming popular, they said, well, how can I push that further to make myself benefit? And they became leaders of groups of crazy conspiracy theorist people to benefit from that. You see? They're basically swindlers. They're the ultimate, you know, the people who lead these cults in real life because they're just trying to get something out of it. That's literally what that, whether it's for ego, whether it's for actual money, whatever it may be, <clears throat> that's who these people are. And they're absolutely taking advantage of the people who watch their content and milking them. 100 fucking percent. That's why they do it. They're not doing it because they believe all of that shit. They factually say things that are wrong. They've outright made videos saying, Dark Side Phil rage quits. When I didn't rage quit, I'm still playing the game. But they literally make shit up daily to get that insanely gullible, stupid, convincible audience to go along with the new negative thing they're saying to make a buck or to get over or to be more popular, get the clicks, get the views, get the subs, whatever it may be, okay? And this is a very sad group. Because they literally want to see me suffer, despite the fact that the reasons behind it are not real. And the problem with that is you can't fight that. How do you fight complete 
nonsensical insanity. You can't convince them anything factual because they believe nonsense on a daily basis, you know? If anything, it should be someone like YouTube or Twitch who's looking at shit like that and saying, this person's a, 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 a shit stirrer. All they do is talk shit and literally have no productive content. All they're here to do is hurt and get over by crapping on someone. That is not content that should be allowed. In, in reality, outside of the realm of the internet, it's not. People get sued all the time for defamation or slander, and there's big court cases about it. You read about them in the media and everything, right? You can't just say and do whatever you want about someone and drag them through the mud and make shit up about them to get over yourself. It's not legal to do so. In India, you can't even say factual things about someone that's negative. I'm not even kidding. There's actually a law in India that even if someone factually did something bad, you can't say it in the public because it's considered defamatory, and you could sue them for it. That's fucking crazy, in my opinion, by the way. But the point I'm making here is um, this whole era of internet content creation has opened the door to like the Wild West of this kind of shit. There's no regulation. There's no protections against it. And sadly, I've become one of the people who's been a major victim of this kind of internet ire where something as innocent as this is how you don't play, make fun of that how Phil plays games because he's not very good at them, turned into Phil isn't the most evil lying, cheating, you know, dishonest person on the internet, and every day he's breaking laws and doing terrible things to people all around him, so you should hate on him constantly, but by the way, watch my content and give me clicks and likes and send me money on my live streams and do this and do that. Wait, what? Where did that part come in? Right? Because <clears throat> the truth of the matter is, if you were out to just expose someone doing something wrong, you wouldn't monetize it. You would just do the right thing. But instead, you're monetizing every piece of it. You're accepting all these contributions and donations. That's why you're doing it. You're a fucking dishonest piece of shit. Let's be honest here. How many of my major detractors out there are not benefiting from it in some way? Are you out of your mind? They're doing it for a reason. And again, they are taking advantage of a large group of people on the internet that have banded together, finding a sense of belonging, a sense of... Uh, the same mindset, you know, when people think the same way, they tend to group together. So if everyone has this weird groupthink mentality that I'm bad, right? They're going to flock together. And now where do we rally? On the people who are restreaming and making fun of Phil constantly. On the people who are making defamatory videos about Phil constantly. Was well, any of it true? Well, it must be. I just want to believe it. Who cares if any of it's substantiated? We we'll just believe it. Phil Rage quit that game, but I'm still playing the game. Phil Rage quit that game. Phil was never good at Street Fighter. But what about all these years of tournament history that's well documented on the internet? Phil was never good at Street Fighter. And they actually revel in that shit, you know? <clears throat> so, yeah, Zoya. That's, that's the three groups, you know? I don't believe that everyone out there absolutely wants to see me suffer. I think that there is a group of people that want to see me be challenged. They feel that when I'm playing the game, to see that level of challenge adds to the enjoyment of because there's a sense of overcoming an obstacle. It's not steamrolling constantly. And I agree to some extent with that. But there's a large group of people out there that are being misled by essentially a bunch of cult leaders who are doing this to make a buck on their behalf. And these people need to have their eyes open and say, wow, these people have been using us for years and it's getting worse and worse. Why are we becoming more and more gullible on a daily basis? In, in the scope of things, all right, <clears throat> I am absolutely positively tiny. I am small potatoes. I don't make a ton of money. I'm definitely not hugely popular. Why do you think these people hyper-focus on me? Right? Even if every possible thing they were saying about me was true, which it is not, the vast majority of what they say about me is false. But even if it were all true, who fucking cares with how small of a guy I am on the internet? There are people out there that are doing way worse things on a daily basis. They're hurting people. They're lying to their audience. I, I've explained to you guys <clears throat> many times, many times, that over the years, the things that is happening with the gaming community, people who have become paid shills, literally paid advertisements for games, they're doing way more harm to the, the, the public at large than anything I've ever done. I'm the antithesis of the shit that they do to harm 
every day, yet somehow they make me out to be the villain. Why? I'll tell you why. Because those people aren't doing it because they feel like they're exposing something great or bad. They're doing it because they found a way to monetize it. That's why. The day that everyone who dislikes me turns ads off, stops accepting donations, stops getting super chats, super stickers, cheers, subs, and, and monetary donations is the day that it all goes away. Because that's what it's all about in the modern era. It ain't about hate and fill. It's about taking advantage about a bunch of gullible people who want to believe whatever you tell them because they got this sense of community and worth around it. And then you milk them for all they're worth because you think that they're stupid and you don't respect your audience. That's exactly what these people have been doing all along. <clears throat> Alrighty then. Ren Soja Daka Megiddo has done a super chat and says, Phil, I know this game gets complaints about reusing bosses. <clears throat> That's just the Asylum Demon Everywhere system. They're making you stronger so you can become the Dragon of Kaelid again. Now, here's the thing. Um, here's the thing. I agree with you, but at the same time, that's no excuse for reusing that much that much stuff. For example, take a look at uh, Neo, right? Neo. When you start off playing Neo, everything's crazy tough, crazy bosses. When you're halfway through Neo, you realize everything's reused 100 times, right? And people complain about it. And when it was Neo, oh, that's valid. Now, because it's from software doing it, oh, it's okay. No, it's still reusing assets. How many times am I going to go into a dungeon and the optional boss is just three other regular bosses when it was first they were first single, then they're double, now there's triple. Oh, wow, that's really unique. It's a really creative thought process there, right? What, when at the end of the game, will there be ten of them in there? <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Like, it really is kind of lazy game development to just throw the same shit at you a million times with a variation. Like, the dragons. The first dragon I fought was very cool. The second dragon I fought... All right, it's kind of the same dragon. At least this one has some magic abilities. It's in a different setting. Now it's like, now there's a rot dragon. Now there's regular dragons that don't have half the attacks, but they look exactly the same, and it's the dragon. And then there's the dragons, the dragons, the dragons, the dragons. You've taken away any sense of, like, interest or wonderment. When I see a dragon, I'm like, oh, it's a dragon. I fought this thing 400 times already. I won't care anymore, you know? That's just a normal thing to me now. That's why when I fought the Rot Dragon yesterday, people were like, oh, I'm so anticipating Phil fighting the Rot Dragon. I'm like, I don't, it's, I already fought this thing. I already know what it's, it's going to do. The difference is that it has some Rot. Big fucking deal, right? <clears throat> so, no, I'm sorry, but I, do, I don't think that they deserve a pass. I think they should be criticized fairly, not overly, but fairly, that they reused a ton of content in the game because it was open world. Zoya did another super chat that's crazy. As a, as a new reviewer, I didn't know how bad the trolling can be. Yeah, and it's sad, and there's nothing I can do about it. I've tried for years to reason with people. I've tried to counter some of the crazy stuff that's said about me. But the thing is, when you have a group of people that believe anything, and they want to believe anything, you can't ever make them see reason. Because at any moment, someone will just make something else up, and that's the new thing that's talked about constantly. So there's not much I can do to counter that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I could sit here and do an entire stream. Here's the debunking stream. And I'll tell you the truth behind what happened here and the truth about what happened here. But then there's 10 other things that come up, so it doesn't matter. <clears throat> so there's no point in addressing any of it. <clears throat> um, Only Ice Coffee did a super chat. So the sad part about this is the trolls will, will clip this rant and take it out of context and make money on your content. Yeah, because here's what they'll do. I can tell you exactly what they're going to do because they're, they're so... They do it so much that now it's just a fucking tried-ass formula. They'll take what I just said and they'll say, you see, but everything that Phil just said can be applied to himself and here's how. And then they'll show a million defamatory things that aren't true about me and claim that I'm a hypocrite. And they'll say, well, here's the evidence. And there's no evidence. All it is is conspiracy, leaks, bullshit. Stuff that's not corroborated and not factual. But they've said those things so many times over the years about me, they act like it's factual when it's not. They actually convince their communities to believe their own bullshit that they made up and now it's a fact in their crazy minds, so you can't ever disprove them. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? Right now, I could have a legal document proving something about me, and I would show it to you, and they'd immediately say, that's a doctor document. There's no way to prove that it's real. So what's the point of me ever saying anything? And anything I say and do, it could always be said that he's lying, then there's no point in ever bothering with their nonsense. So, I don't. <clears throat> 
Oh, see, and I very well could, too. Top Op Smoke Puffer says, You should slander them instead. Start the information war. Phil strikes back art. If I were ever, ever to do what they did do to me back to them, they would not survive. They would not fucking survive. They would be buried. Because these people who usually do shit like this, actually, they're the worst ones. But I'm not that kind of person. I don't make toxic content. I'm not going to fuck around or go down that, that rabbit hole, that slippery slope. That is a bad place to be. And I refuse to do it. I'm a positive content creator. I've definitely changed myself over the years from who I used to be. Uh, I purposely don't make that kind of content. And I don't want to. So I absolutely refuse to do what they do back to them. You know, they say fight fire with fire. Not if not if it means sacrificing who you are as a person and as a content creator. And I'm not going to do that shit. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Shout out to... Atlas Telemon, who did a $2 tip, he says, you know, I never watched you play any From Software before, but because of Elden Ring and watching your playthrough, I actually started some days ago myself. I'm glad to hear that, Atlas. Now, here's the thing. As a newcomer playing Elden Ring, like, if you, you've never played FromSoft before, dude, this game is going to be an endeavor for you. I, I, I feel for you. I'm playing it as someone coming out of a, a frame of perspective that I've played all the FromSoft stuff up to this point, sometimes multiple times. I have <clears throat> that frame of reference to bring to the table. I see all the similarities of things from the previous games. I'm telling you the bosses that outright are lifted from other games, and I know their attack patterns and everything because I've seen them in other games, right? If you don't have that, basically everything in this game is brand new. Everything's confusing. I I couldn't imagine a newcomer playing this game without a guide. I couldn't. You need a guide to figure shit out. You you know the game the things that you think is explanatory. Oh the the uh, the side of grace is telling me to go that way. It's wrong. You're not supposed to go that way yet. You're supposed to go south and east before you go north. If you go north, you skip all the content you need. You're skipping all your upgrades for your flask. You're skipping the the, the wondrous physics. You're skipping everything. So I I feel for you, and I actually hope. That long term you enjoy the game. I hope that you won't give up. Do not feel like this is a game that you cannot look for help. Do not feel like if you hit a wall that it's 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 a bad thing. I get the feeling that newcomers to this series <clears throat> are genuinely going to have to put in more work than people who have been there, done that, and done this kind of formula before. It's very different and very, very challenging. That being said, welcome to hell, and I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad that so many newcomers are taking this journey because now you're kind of seeing the kind of crap that we've been going through all these years playing these games. You know what I mean? Thank you for the tip. Tarantula MS2018 just tipped $10. He says, hey, Phil, I watched the trailer of the game called The Quarry. I thought the game looked pretty good. Yes, we talked about this a few days ago. The Quarry is the new game coming out from Supermassive Games, the same people who make the Dark Pictures Anthology. And the same people who made Until Dawn many years ago, a game that a lot of people actually said is one of the better playthroughs or best playthroughs I've ever done that was narrative-based, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, pretty cool. And I'm excited for it. You know, with Until Dawn basically being watching a horror movie and interacting with it, I'm very excited for this new one coming out in June, they said it was. Yeah, I think it should be pretty good. Um, it'll be a fun ride for sure. I love I love playing those games for the very first time and not knowing what's coming, and you know trying to keep everyone alive. It's very very entertaining, so it should be good. Uh, thank you for the tip. Koji Tanks tipped another dollar fifty. Says you're good at Street Fighter, Phil. Just not better than me. Stop ducking me, man up, and face me on the PlayStation. <laughs> not not on Xbox. Oh my god. <clears throat> anyway, thank you, Goji Tanks, for the tip. Of course, this is the real Goji Tanks tipping me today. So. Daz Bo Shit just did a super chat and says the following. I remember being tactically involved. Uh, wait, no. Tacitly? Tacitly involved? In a way that is understood or implied without being directly stated. So he was involved in hate watching. Meaning he watched me in a hateful manner but wasn't directly involved in the hate. Gotcha. Thank you. I had to look the word up. 
I actually didn't know what the word meant. <clears throat> I remember being tacitly involved in the hate watching right up until that they started attacking just to get a rise out of you. Then it got uncomfortable. And again, at one point, absolutely positively, the things that were said against me, I feel were true. At one point, it was while Phil is, first of all, he refuses to improve his content, right? He doesn't Im implement anything that would make him a better gamer or a better content creator, meaning I, would, I didn't want to do direct capture. I didn't want to do live streaming. I didn't want to interact with my audience. I didn't want to do special events and things for my audience that they would benefit from. <clears throat> for the longest time, it was Phil sits in front of his TV with a camera right here, and he talks when he plays games, and it's the same thing every single fucking day. And I get that. That was a valid criticism. When I sat here and literally every waking moment of playing a game, I would complain and yell at a game director or a game developer. Yes, that was a valid criticism. There was a lot of things about me back then that were quite embarrassing and bad as a content creator. It was also my shtick. That was the thing that a lot of people came to see me do. And that's what kept my audience coming back. They liked the shtick that I did. It's funny because some people say, was that a character? Was it a character? Well, what it was, was it was over-the-top reactions. Did I genuinely have some of the feelings that I expressed in those videos? Yes, but I was always kind of overdoing it and over-exaggerating it to get that reaction out of people to get people to come back. If something's working and people like it and want to come back and see more, why not keep giving them what they want? You know what I'm saying? But what ended up happening was, <clears throat> over time, everything else uh, evolved and not me. And that's where the rise of This Is How You Don't Play came from. People basically saying, Phil, your content is so outdated at this point because you absolutely refuse to change. You're the same guy five years later and everyone else has moved on and doing different stuff and you're not, right? They were absolutely positively correct. And it took me many years to figure this out. Even when I adopted direct capture and live streaming, I still refused to acknowledge my streaming audience for four fucking years. <laughs> Four more years that I didn't do it. It's like, what was I thinking? I was a fucking buffoon. Finally, in 2017, I started to get it. I got I had to get out of that mentality of being a YouTuber making offline videos and realize that the future is interaction with you guys. The future is having this organic chemistry, talking and having a fun time together live and then having that genuine enjoyment of what I'm doing come through in the on-demand videos because back then... Yeah, was there some enjoyment? Of course, but I was getting so burnt out on the formula that I was doing. I'm so happy to not have to do that shit anymore. So yeah, listen, I get it. Back then, it was fun to make fun of Dark Side Phil because he was the obstinate, stubborn asshole. He didn't want to improve. He didn't want to put out quality content. He didn't even care about putting out quality content. He just wanted to put out the stuff that made people laugh to make a buck. You're right. But I changed along the way. I had an epiphany in 2017 when I realized it was either change for the better or pack it up and get the fuck out. And I saw the light those first few months when I started being that interactive streamer. I was like, geez, it's so different. Now when I'm a streamer, I can play stuff more long form. I don't have to rush through the games. I can enjoy them for what they are. People want to interact with me and talk with me when I play them. It is such a different, a <clears throat> really different situation. Um, you know? And I love it. But now, you're absolutely right, Das Boshi. It becomes, instead of, let's legitimately criticize Phil and make fun of him for his shortcomings, it's, now let's get personal. Let's personally, on every possible level, say nasty things about him, whether they're truthful or not, to get that rise out of my audience and make a buck. That's what it's become. <clears throat> I appreciate Das Boshi that someone like you, who maybe previously didn't like me, and was part of that poke, poke, poke at Phil, make fun of him, turned around and now, you know... You've been a big supporter. You have. You've been nice to me over the years. You've said nice things on the streams. You've supported here and there. And I really appreciate that. Thank you for that. Um, like Mick says, were you afraid of your of your viewers to some degree in the first four years, like social anxiety? Now, I don't know what you mean. If you mean the first four years that I ever made content, or do you mean the first four years that I was streaming? If you could clarify that, I can answer better. Alice Telemann took me $1.50. <clears throat> and says, my son is helping me a little bit with your playthrough. I'm also having some bearing, having fun, and I'm in no rush. And that's and that's definitely the attitude to take with this game. There's no rush, man. You take your time, step by step, right? Little dungeon by little dungeon, little boss by little boss, and uh, eventually 
you persevere, right? You make some big steps. George R. R. Miyazaki tipped me two dollars. Says, should we release a gamer declaration of independence? We gamers shall live free from persecution in our gamer republic. That sounds really dramatic and kind of over the top. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying just because you upload a video to YouTube, it should not give everyone else on the internet free reign to literally, literally make shit up about you. There should be protections in place, and there now there are absolutely none unless you have a lawyer on full-time employment ready to slap down a cease and desist at every waking moment. No, it's not fair. It's an unfair place. It's really fucked up. Only Ice Coffee, thanks for the super chat. There's absolutely no reason I'm even going to read that because if I do, it's just going to cause a bunch of people to rip their hair out and go crazy. And it's just going to cause drama, and you know that, so I'm not reading that. <laughs> There's absolutely no way I'm reading that. <clears throat> okay. Um... Legmik says, you said you didn't interact in the first four years of streaming. How come? Okay. By the way, Legmik, I think your membership expired right now. It did. You had the you had the silver crown, and it disappeared between your two comments. Just so you know. Don't know if you knew that or not. Because uh, it threw me off because I'm looking at it. I'm like, it's definitely the same guy, but his crown's gone. His, his name's not green anymore. Anyway, um... The first four years that I streamed, it was interesting because I could see the direct reactions to what was happening when I was streaming, and I liked that, but I felt like people weren't there, and in particular, there's another thing you got to remember too, I should bring this up because this is very important. This is very important for context. At the time, 2013, when I started live streaming, <clears throat> Live streaming was not necessarily fully monetizable. And what I mean by that is things such as cheering and stuff was not actually really implemented yet. It wasn't like, oh, I could be a full-time streamer because I get subs and cheers and, and tip revenue and all that. It wasn't like that at all. It was more like, yes, you could live stream and it was more about getting just the subs. And then please pledge to my Patreon or buy a product that I'm pushing on my stream. That's more what it was like back then. Okay, It's not like today, you see. Um, and so that being said, I knew that the vast majority of any money that I was going to make to run my business was going to be on YouTube ad revenue. Cause in 2013, YouTube ad revenue was still good. It wasn't until 2017 that the big ad apocalypse happened and it all plummeted. And now you can't make a living just with basic videos on YouTube anymore. Okay. So I knew that even though I was live streaming at the time, I had to make my main focus putting the same quality of video out for the YouTube on-demand viewer because that's where my bread and butter was coming from. That's where my support was primarily coming from, okay? Um, so even though I was live streaming, I would ignore the audience. I would see what they were saying. It was interesting to see some of the reactions, but admittedly, <clears throat> yes, there were times when things didn't go well. I mean, I'm not going to bring up the specifics, but remember the infamous Kingdom Hearts finale incident and stuff like that? which I look back today and I'm like, man, what a stupid situation. If I were a different kind of content creator back then, that never would have even happened. But because I was being this kind of stupid offline content creator who was online, didn't make sense. It just set myself up for disaster in a lot of ways. Um, and so, yeah, like it was interesting because at first I was like, oh, this is like a whole new world of content creation. I can watch live and, and I can see who likes it and who's not liking it. I could see the live reaction and maybe even steer the content in one direction or another depending on how the audience is reacting live. But at the same time, I felt like I had to directly act like they weren't there so that the on-demand viewer wouldn't feel like the content was geared just towards the live audience. A lot of the people were afraid when I became a live streamer that, man, all your content has changed now because all you do is talk to the audience constantly. You see? In fact, it was funny... <clears throat> It was absolutely one of the criticisms I got at the time was that, Phil, we can tell that stream chat is just spoiling the entire game for you. Because as you're going through the game, you're doing so well, and we know that you don't do well in games. So obviously people are just telling you everything on the fly in the stream chat, and your content has changed. And the truth is, they weren't. And a lot of the times, no one was spoiling anything. It was just I was doing well, and people wanted an excuse. An excuse why Phil sucks. So they would always say, oh, it was the stream chat told them to do it. The stream chat. But no, it wasn't. 
<laughs> Excuse me. So I hope that's a, that's a good answer for you. Alice Telemann took me another dollar fifty. He says the Street Fighter Four content was absolutely fabulous. Uh, I felt from day one what you were doing, talking shit as if you were in an arcade with friends or at home with a friend playing together, calling things out even if you knew it was bullshit, just having great fun. Exactly right. You know what? And this is this is actually very truthful too. Arcade days were very different than what you have now with fighting games. Back then, it was actually just as important to be good at the game as it was to be a good shit talker. I'm not kidding. It was part of the cultural experience to deride your opponents when you played them so that way you could mentally throw them off and beat them because then you're the king of the cabinet and you get to keep playing while others have to step up and keep putting money in the machine. It was part of it. Today, it's all outlawed. You can't talk shit during a competitive match, but it was part of the overall experience back then. So when I'm making the content of Street Fighter 4, you know, over a decade ago, I'm trying to bring that experience into the content that I was making and let you guys kind of see exactly how it was back in the day. Now, to some extent, it was completely unfair because it's me talking shit to someone on the other end of the internet who can't even hear, hear me. They can't make a retort. And I knew that. It was a captive audience. It was a captive play. You know, there was no way for them to counter what I was saying and doing. And to some extent, I think that's why people liked the content. It was like, damn, Phil the Bully beating people up in Street Fighter 4 and basically talking shit, shit the whole time, right? People enjoyed that. That was the shtick at the time, right? <laughs> so... You know what I'm saying? But now, things are so different. Now, if I were to make content just like that today, people would go nuts. This guy is out of his mind. What is he? A giant egotist? What is he? A fucking asshole? And he, you know what I mean? Like, people would go nuts if to make that kind of content. I'd probably get in trouble. I'd probably get reported on, on fucking YouTube and have videos taken down for community guidelines for being mean. <laughs> Seriously. J Love the Flash says, wasn't the big tournament you won lacking a lot of key players during that time? No, I didn't even win that tournament. I won many other tournaments that had key notable players in them, but the one everyone talks about is the one that a few key players boycotted. And the ones that were in it, I beat. So there you go. Get the story straight. <clears throat> Hello, Guts. How you doing today? Welcome to the stream. All right, guys. At this point, I think we've exhausted our our uh, discussion of all of this stuff. No, <laughs> I think we have. Um, so, thank you, guys. I, this is more of a Q and A stream, which I'm happy to do. I love doing the Q and A stuff. By the way, okay, just did a five dollar super chat with a bunch of hundreds and it says, "Hola, amigo. Hola, cómo estás." Thank you, OK, for the super chat. All right. I think it's time for us to end the pre-stream and to get started with Elden Ring. That's the vibe I'm getting is that we should move on to playing the game. I've talked enough. I've answered enough of your questions. OK. Thank you, guys. Great pre-stream today. Now let's go kick some butt and get my own butt kicked, too. Let's do it.